Hello, it's Scott Manley here with a new segment I'm going to call Scott's Deep Space Network, covering all the nerdy things that I can't really fit into the other videos. So to start out with, let's take a look at 8-Bit Cinema from Cinefix. They are taking classic movies like Blade Runner, Star Trek, uh, Anchorman, and they're basically redoing them as 8-bit console games with awesome graphics and sound effects in lovingly pixelated style. I actually have a clip to take a look here. Well, I hope you enjoy these as much as I do. There is a link, by the way, to subscribe. Um, I would say, being a bit of a pedant, that the graphics are more 16-bit rather than 8-bit, but either way, they're like a long way from the million-dollar budgets of these movies. And uh, yeah, also Shadowrun being used for Blade Runner is kind of cool because, of course, Shadowrun is itself inspired by Blade Runner, so you've got some kind of nerd loop going on here. So yeah, 8-bit cinema, check it out. Um, next, real world news. First of all, we have Voyager 1 finally leaving the solar system. And this is, of course, big news. It's the first interstellar thing that, that uh, has come from the planet Earth. Unless you're one of those people that believes in the nuclear propelled manhole cover, but the Voyager people do have the benefit of actual scientific instrumental data that shows the differences in the, the cosmic environment as we have reached out to 125 AU. That's a long way out. The, the radio signal is taking something like 36 hours to go back and forth now. So uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool, especially during the star the press conference that NASA gave where they played the Star Trek music and ended up calling it V'ger. Uh, <laughs> also in NASA news, they launched a lady to the moon. The Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Environment Explorer is going to look at the atmosphere and the dust surrounding the moon. The moon does actually have a very tenuous atmosphere, which is actually apparently more dense than it used to be because all those rockets going to the moon actually left detectable amounts of rocket fuel uh, products in the atmosphere. Uh, another cool thing, if you've seen the videos of the launch, is this thing has it takes off like a, a bullet. It's based on the Minotaur 5 launcher which is essentially an ICBM, which has been modified to put things into space. It's five stages, all solid rocket boosters. Try doing that in Kerbal Space Program. It's not uh, the easiest thing. Uh, but yeah, it takes off at about 2G acceleration, not like any of those you know, liquid fuel rockets that leave the pad at maybe 1.3G uh, G or something. Um, also, a, a frog managed to photobomb the launch sequence. is a great photo of this frog being thrown through the air. It was probably sitting in one of the ponds where they store water uh, and they pump it into the, the launch platform to kind of uh, damp the noise. The frog is probably lost at this point. Uh, so that adds to the bat and the, the turkey vulture, which have been, you know, uh, unfortunate victims of space launches. Anyway, yeah, also there was the A Nobel Prize Awards taking place at uh, Har in Harvard. They uh, basically reward scientific research, which is legitimate research, which may not have immediately obvious consequences or particularly niche or interesting. There was a winner this year for biology and astronomy, which is pretty rare to see those two sciences coming together, where they uh, studied how dung beetles find their way, or they navigate, and apparently they use the Milky Way, or there's some evidence they use the Milky Way. Also, uh, the physics prize went to a group that demonstrated that it was possible to run on top of ponds, and that is liquid ponds, not frozen ponds, because even I can do that, if you were a sufficiently uh, capable athlete and you were doing this on the moon. So yeah, great stuff coming out of the Nobel Prizes, always check them out. And if you like that kind of thing, also um, XKCD, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of you know about XKCD, it's one of the best websites out there for nerds, but uh, it's essentially a comic strip and it is very simple art that has generally got a lot of very geek stuff. My favourite thing on it, my favourite comic on XKCD is the one where the zombies are, everybody's coming back from the dead. And the mathematicians are like, oh my god, everyone's coming back from the dead. So they all run off, they write a paper together, and then they find the grave of Paul Erdos, and they try to <laughs> get him to sign on as a collaborator so they can get an Erdos number of one. Uh, Paul Erdos was this amazing mathematician that collaborated with more people than anyone else in the 20th century. He was a guy that kind of lived out of a suitcase for much of his life and just kept on solving little problems. 
uh, he, very cool person. So the closer you are to him, you know, the, the lower your Erdos number. I think I'm pronouncing it right and I could be getting it wrong because he is Hungarian. And now back to the world of EVE Online, which is always newsworthy. Uh, just about a week after the Odyssey 1.1 expansion was released, uh, somebody has managed to lose an ultra-rare Moracha, which is a cruiser that was given away as a prize for Alliance Tournament, for the latest Alliance Tournament. Now, there are only about 50 of these in the game, so the going price is frankly ridiculous. Uh, the blueprint for this was sold to the buyer for 105 billion isk. That's about three and a half thousand to four thousand dollars if you were to convert Plex into a uh, game cash. Uh, probably the guy didn't do that, but maybe he did, in which case there, it is proof there is no such thing as pay to win in EVE. He was set upon in a low sec complex and was killed by a cruiser and a Tech 2 frigate, which cost about one thousandth of what his ship cost. So yeah, Poison Ivy, you are once again uh, shining proof that there is no such thing as pay to win in EVE Online. Um, in other games, Star Citizen continues its uh, development. They have unlocked the 20 million goal, or they've announced what the 20 million dollar goal is. Right now we're sitting about 18 and a half million dollars. We've all got all sorts of awesomeness, but when we reach 20 million they have told us that there will be combat planet side. So you'll be able to run around with your laser pistol or crossbow for a shroud of the avatar backers and shoot each other for fun because that's what it's all about. Humble Bundle 9 has launched and it includes FTL, Fez, Brutal Legend, Mark of the Ninja, Eats, Munchies and Trine. It is awesome. Uh, you only have to spend about $5 to unlock all those games and there will probably be more stuff coming up later. When people see my Steam collection they think I must have spent like $5,000 on it. In fact all those online guides say I've spent $5,000 on it. Truth is I've just bought every single Humble Bundle and a few other bundles because Honestly, I like buying things in bulk and just finding these, you know, awesome things in them. You know, it's great. Humble Bundle is the best way to grow your collection and uh, also give to charity. So uh, check it out, humblebundle.com. Also, the developers of Kerbal Space Program have put out a video showing the science and research features of Kerbal Space Program 0.22. Uh, we are looking for this. It'll probably be released sometime October, but honestly we don't know because it's going to take a long time to test and debug all this thing, especially since I aim to find many, many bugs. But uh, it is a great video. Go and watch it and uh, re-watch it because Max does speak rather quickly. But uh, it's, it really shows that the game's career mode is actually Actually, having to has having some meat on it now at this point. Also, um, Elite Dangerous they put up a video showing a stylized uh, battle between a couple of battle cruisers. This was a part of this was a competition to uh, select somebody to score the game, and the winner was selected based upon his score to the video. It looks awesome, but of course it's not actual real gameplay, so who knows what's going to happen there. Oh yeah, one last thing. Dan Karen in Australia is turning 21. His uh, girlfriend asked me if I could give him a shout out. He's a bluegrass mu musician, and uh, I have to say, bluegrass is awesome. And I can't wait for the Hardly Strictly Bluegrass Festival in San Francisco, which is uh, next month. Anyway, uh, that's enough for me. Until next time, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.